Thank you for uh, Hello, I'm Hara, uh, master's student from Kyoto University. Uh, today, I'd like to talk uh, my <clears throat> my theme of uh, the theme of my study is humbly uh, Sufism of humbly school, and this is uh, the contents contents of the table of today's presentation. Uh, the purpose of this pre presentation is <clears throat> to elucidate Ibn Qayyim Jawziya's view of Sufism. Ibn Qayyim Jawziya, or simply Ibn Qayyim, is best known as a disciple of uh, eminent Hanbali scholar Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, who has considerable influences on modern Salafi movements. And the question is, uh, by what reason Ibn Qayyim criticized uh, well-known Almerian mystic Ibn Arif? Next, I'd like to explain the background of the study. Uh, first, because of the interest on uh, Salafiya, Wahhabiya, and the relationship with his master Ibn Taymiyyah, previous studies on Ibn Qayyim mainly focused on his aspects as a jurist or a theologian. In addition, previous studies on his Sufi thought uh, mostly rely on his later work, Madarij Salkin, a full commentary on uh, famous Hanbali Sufi, Abdullah Ansari al-Harawi, and Manazi Saidin. It is true that uh, Madarij is one of his significant work, as Muhammad Rashid Ridar estimated as this is the finest work on Sufism and ethics. Uh, he is actually a first editor of Madaraj in modern, modern world. And here we should understand uh, he recognized Sufism and ethics as the same, not separated. Uh, although Madaraj is an important work, it does not show Ibn Qayyim's comprehensive attitude towards Sufism. Uh, while efforts have been devoted to studying the relationship with <coughs> relationship between Hanbali school and Sufism, uh, the researches on individual thinkers are insufficient. Uh, Hanbali school and Sufism are thought to be incompatible <clears throat> before. However, they didn't oppose each other both historically and ideologically. Major Hanbali critics such as Ibn Jawzi and Ibn Taymiyyah were indeed Sufis. Uh, besides the fact whether they were Sufis or not, they only opposed to when Sufis practices and thoughts are against Sharia in their eyes. In fact, uh, recent studies show there were some Sufis, even in Taimiyan circle. We can no longer say uh, Hanbali school and Sufis are in hostile, hostile relation. Uh, here is a Silsila of the Kadriya order. Uh, Silsila is a Sufi chain. Uh, as shown here, Ibn Qaim is connected to uh, an eponym of Trika Kadriya uh, through three famous uh, Hanbali scholars. Then I'd like to move on uh, Ibn Qayyim's life and works. His full name is uh, Shamsuddin Abdullah uh, Muhammad Abi Bakr Ibn Ayyub Zurui. Uh, he was born in Damascus in uh, 2019 after his family moved from Zuru to Damascus. And he is son of a uh, superintendent, Kaim of Madrasa Jawziya. Uh, that's why he is called as such. After he studied under several scholars and mastered a uh, wide field of science, sciences, he joined the circle of Ibn Taymiyyah when the master returned from Cairo in 1330. And he got in prison with his master, thirteen twenty six, and released after his death in thirteen uh, twenty eight. After that, 
he started uh, writing authoring books. His major uh, disciple, uh, Ibn Rajab, uh, who called the last great rep representative uh, of medieval Hanbali school, represent, uh, <coughs> sorry, the last great representative scholar of medieval Hanbali school, and Ibn Kathir. Uh, his tafsir is still uh, popular until today. And here are Ibn Qayyim's major works. Uh, Ibn Waqim is a uh, work on principles of jurisprudence and designed taqlid and proved the obligation of ijtihad. A true kulhukumiya <coughs> follows Ibn Taymiyyah's uh, siyasa sharia and deals with all aspects of uh, governance. Uh, Zad Ma'al is probably his last work on prophetic, uh, prophetic biography. Uh, famous work, the, uh, the famous work Medicine of the Prophet is a separated volume on this work. And here are works on Sufism. Matarij Salikin is a full commentary on Ansari's Manazi. About Tariq al Hijatain, I will explain later. And Kitab al Ruf, uh, this is a work on psychology based on Hadith. Al Wabil Saib Min Min al Kalim Taib is uh, uh, this work introduces about 100 merits of Zikr. The last one, uh, Kashuf al Guitar, is a uh, work on legality of Sufi practice such as Saman, uh, Sufi audience. Next, I'd like to uh, introduce Tariq Hijatain. Uh, its full title is Tariq Hijatain wa Bab Sadatain. It means uh, Path of the Two Migrations and the Gate of Two Happiness. And this is one of uh, Ibn al Qayyim's major works concerning Sufism. Uh, and it is commentary on Abdul Rah Ansari's Manazil and Ibn al Arif's Mahasin. And Bell suggests this is essentially a commentary on Mahasin. However, it, I can say uh, it, it's better to say it's multi layered work on legal, theological, and Sufi issues. Uh, in this work, Ibn Qayyim criticized Ibn, Qayyim, Ibn al Arif's commentary, Mahasin, which I will show later. Uh, here is a figure of uh, the relationship of Manazil and its commentaries. Next, I'll explain Ibn al Arif about uh, Ibn al Arif. Uh, he was born in Almeria in 1088, and played a crucial role as a prominent Almerian Sufi under the rule of the Murabi dynasty. Uh, he is the son of Garrison Arif, uh, which means a uh, knight leader of a knight, uh, the le a leader of knight guard, and of the fortress of Almeria, and that's why he, Ibn Arif, is called as such. And he is one of the most eminent Almerian mystic. In his time, Almeria was the center of esoteric Sufis uh, in Andalus. And his represent representative work, Mahasin, greatly influenced, influenced Ibn Arabi's Futuhat Makiyyeh. Uh, Ibn Arif composed Mahasin for elites, not for commoners. Uh, commoners who are still in the process of spiritual training or journey. And in this book, uh, after some after the argument about some stations, he said that love, Mahabba, as the highest station, among others. Then I'd like to explain how Ibn Qayyim criticized Ibn Arif. The first point is 
uh, mystical interpretation of Quran uh, Tawi in Arabic. Uh, he does not allow it as shown here. In the station of patience, Sabr, he denied Ibn Arif's uh, interpretation. As uh, what refers to his interpretation here does not match to his meaning. And it is quite different interpretation and is quite far from the truth and wasted effort for interpretation of the patients. Uh, next is about his interpret, uh, even Arif's interpretation of the station of fear, half in Arabic. And he said, this is said from the nonsense, flippant and his own insistence. Uh, next one is also con uh, concerning the station of fear. Uh, this thing is from shameful and ridiculous ecstatic utterance, and there's no doubt that his source is excessive ignorance of a foreign speaker who does not know necessity of that phrase. The last one is about the station of hope, Raja in Arabic. Uh, this citation of Quran is from kind, uh, kind of mystery. Although even Karim attacked Ibn Arif Tawil, he accepted some, uh, some of his statements. <clears throat> Here are the accepted cases regarding the station of the Mahabha. Uh, Ibn Arif is saying that Komala's love pleases servant service is correct. Uh, he's saying that Komala's love relieves servant's distress is correct. Next. Uh, next point is criticism uh, toward his preference for Fana. Uh, his uh, station of the alertness, uh, sahu, and subsistence, bakar, is better than uh, Fana and accomplishes uh, servitude, uh, ubudi. Uh, in station of the uh, fear, a servant necessitates subsistence, bakar, which is more perfect. Uh, which is the most perfect for necessitation and stronger and more perfect than fana annihilation. And even uh, to even Arif saying that their uh, elite love, Mahabhu, is their annihilation in God's love, uh, Ibn Qayyim refuted his idea and claimed uh, the subsistence, subsistence in the uh, al Bakafi Mahabha is better and more perfect than annihilation in need. In regard with Fanar, Ibn Karim classified it into three types. First one is annihilation of the existence other than God, uh, which, refer, refer, which is uh, referring to Akbarian Sufis. And Ibn Karim recognized they, uh, they, them as uh, heretics. Second type of fana is uh, annihilation of witnessing other than God. Uh, he, uh, which is referring to even Arif and other Sufis. And the last one is annihilation of worship other than God and willing it. Even uh, I uh, consider this is uh, the the most perfect, not the most perfect for now. For now. After this classification, he states there is no fourth type. Uh, not surprisingly, there, these three types of fana are exactly the same as even time years uh, classification of fana. Then he explained why fana is inferior to Baka. He states, uh, state of Bakar in Lao is more perfect than state of Fana because Fana raises love, which is about its distinction and witnessing, and it gives bewilderment and silence. Also, Bakar indicates spirit's stability and its restraint. Uh, before the conclusion, I'd like to summarize the discussion. First, firstly, 
uh, was Ibn Qayyim did not always oppose to Ibn Arif's interpretation, Tawi, he harshly attacked him when they are not based on Quran. Secondly, Ibn Qayyim uh, preferred Bakar to Fana. Lastly, Ibn Qayyim classified Fana into three types, uh, which are same as Ibn Taymiyyah's one, <clears throat> and consider that Ibn Arif's uh, Fana is defective, but still not heretical, such uh, like Akbarian Sufis. Uh, finally, I'd like to conclude. Uh, the question of this presentation was, uh, by what reason Ibn Qayyim criticized Ibn Arif? And the answer is a uh, mystical interpretation, which is not based on Quran. Or in other words, when uh, his interpretation uh, is not based on traditional, total, traditionalist, total, traditionalist interpretation. As a humble scholar, Ibn Qayyim sticks to literal interpretation of Quran. And also, <clears throat> uh, he criticized Ibn Arif uh, because, Ibn Arif, because of Ibn Arif's preference of Fana over Bakar and his understanding of the former, as it is ultimate goal of Sufi. In this respect, we can recognize uh, Ibn Qayyim as a thinker following sober Sufism of Baghdadi school. And future perspectives. Uh, from this discussion, uh, I can present uh, two perspectives. The first one is to create clarify the characteristics of Hanbali Sufism by focusing on what they accepted and what they repudiated. And the second one is to examine how Ibn Qayyim's Sufi thought influences modern understanding of Sufism. <clears throat> uh, we can consider Ibn Qayyim's Sufism as ethical Sufism, which is contradictory if we merely understand Sufism as, as Islamic mysticism. Uh, since Rashid Rida identified Ibn Qayyim's Sufi thought as Sufism and ethics, uh, Hanbali Sufism greatly influenced uh, modern understanding of Sufism as it subsumed ethics. That is to say, we can investigate Hanbali Sufism uh, contribution to the formation of modern discourse on Sufism. Uh, here is a bibliography. Thank you for your attention.